you might really love somebody. And so you're going to lie to them to try to get them to like you. You're not making that person like you. You're not making them love you. You're making them love an avatar that's not really you. You're making them love a mask. And you're going to always have to have it in the back of your mind. They don't really love me for who I really am. They love me for who I, they think I am. Yeah, correct that. They love you for who you tricked them into thinking that you were. And sometimes we do it ourselves. We fall in love with someone and we say, I don't care if he's got Edgar hair and the sideways hat. I love him anyway. I don't care if all those rumors about her are true. I love her anyway. It's kind of said. I don't care what none of y'all say, I still love her. And it isn't so much that the person was an angel, it's that we, we make them so. Or at least we make them appear to be so. We give them a mask of that. And then we're surprised when people turn out to be what they are, rather than what we expected them to be. And we get mad at them for, for, for not being what we expected them to be, or wanting them to be, or created them in our own minds to be. Because oftentimes we create people in the images of the things that we think we need. One thing, of course, that we know, you don't always get the things that you want, but you can get the things that you need. But also, as we know, the audience is bullshit, and we don't always know what we need. Do you think intentions would matter for that? Like if a person intends to, to create or destroy, but maybe, maybe they intend to create, but they end up destroying? I'm thinking about what you said earlier about the, the four types of people. And I'm wondering if, like for example, a person who, if we're lying, are we, 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 you, we could say, well, you're, you're creating an alternate reality. But that's not really what you're doing. In order to create the alternate reality, what do you have to do? To the old one. Destroy it. Destroy it. So the lie is intended to destroy the old reality. So in other words, yeah, you, you make a new one, but what you're making isn't a real one, if that makes sense. So, is it still true? Yeah. And then, you can look at some of the, so for example, because he comes up every day, Hitler, um, I don't always know what to make of him. Um, I look at someone like Stalin, and Stalin seems to have been a true believer, as far as I can tell when I read the stuff, like he was a tyrant, yes, he was murderous, in case you don't know, like Stalin, I'm sorry, um, Hitler was responsible for the death of about 12 million people in the concentration camps. Stalin was like, damn, hold my vodka. He was responsible for the death of between 30 and 50 million. That's a lot of people, man. And yet if I walk down the street and I'm wearing a, a shirt with a swastika on it, people would rightfully be offended by this, be upset by this. But if I walk down the street wearing a hammer and sickle, if you, if you even knew what it was, a lot of people might think, wow, that's just pretty edgy for him to wear that. But it's way worse, man. It's way more people. And then if I'm walking down the street wearing a Chinese red star on my shirt, again, people probably wouldn't even realize what it was. But if you did and you knew what it was, you'd realize that Mao Zedong was responsible for between 50 and 70 million people. Some estimates as high as 90 million people. That's a lot of death, man. Now, again, Stalin was a true believer, I think. I might be wrong about that, but I think he really believed in the cause. And I wonder if that makes him any less destructive. Yeah. And listen to this, like, group of some, like, socialism. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, if someone would have wore that, they probably would have agreed. Yeah. I remember debating um, a professor years ago. I was, I was, I was a professor at Pasadena City College. <coughs> Excuse me. And we were debating this thing about, about Chinese communism. And I, and I used that number around 70 million people. And this professor lost his mind. He actually grabbed the mic on his podium and he overdrove the, the sound system. He yelled so loudly and he condemned me because he said that there was no evidence that Chairman Mao was responsible for the death of any more than 30 million people. <laughs> right, exactly. And so I just kind of let that sit with the audience for a little bit and I said, okay, I've heard between 50 and 70. Even if we use the professor's number of 30, can we all agree that that's bad enough to condemn a system? And his answer to that response was no. That the death of those people was necessary to build something better in its, in its, per, in its place. And of course, unable to describe what was better about it, I mean, especially if you see the evolution and you recognize the, the emergence of the modern communist state in China, and how much, I mean, this is a place that I was just sitting there like with my jaw open. I was reading last, um, during nutrition, I was 
one of my students from second period was in here, and we were reading about how um, Xi Jinping, the um, I guess the chairman of the Chinese Communist Party, was proposing this. Tell me if this sounds familiar to you. A, a world citizenship to fall under the governance of one body. Right. And, and, it, and when you're reading the article, it's talking about it in these glowing terms about how this is so progressive and forward-looking. And I'm just thinking, like, this is the same regime that, that welded doors shut in the past couple of years to keep people inside their apartments so that they wouldn't leave in their attempt to, to contain COVID. And apartment buildings are catching fire and people are dying inside their apartments because they can't escape. And, we, and people still looked at that and praised Chinese, uh, China's response and said, this is a wonderful response to the pandemic. It's like, really? What were their death rates like compared to everybody else? They're higher, of course. Not too many people in the U.S. died from apartment fires because of COVID, but it happened a lot in China. But for some reason, we excuse the evil on that side because we say because what they were tearing down was so bad that they had to build up something new in its place. And I guess the question is going to become, how often does that really work out for us? You know, we all of our utopian dreams. Yeah. True communism hasn't been uh, created. Uh, work worth in the How many times are they supposed to build a communist society out of debts? How many times? <laughs> Over a hundred million bodies piled up in the twentieth century alone. Yeah. And if you, the more you study it, if you were to study it, it should just. It should alarm you, but this is the thing is we don't study that stuff. We know all about the atrocities of World War II, but we know nothing about the atrocities of, of these people in the 20th century. You know? I had professors who literally had pictures of Mao Zedong on their walls and had, and, had, um, and had hammers and sickles on their walls in the office. And again, if any of them had a swastika, we would rightfully be uh, outraged by that. But these are people who were teaching a lot of people and there's a lot of people who became teachers, I'm sure. Certainly went out into the world with degrees. This is who they taught. Yeah, whenever someone says that, we just haven't done it right yet. Okay. I'm not sure how many bodies you need. I'd like to know. But, and this is the thing to keep in mind is that so often we're, we're faced with this idea of people who are saying that we have to destroy something in order to create something better in its place. And I don't know, man. I don't know what good comes from that type of thing. We've talked before, and so I, I, I probably kind of give away the plot, but you know, I've said before that we, that we can look at the world kind of divided between two types of people. Gods are the ones who love and create. These are the, the attributes of, uh, of the gods. And then the people who hate and destroy, these are the attributes of, of the devils. And everything that the devil does is, is aimed at trying to destroy what's been created. And, and, it, and, it use, and the devils will use the same kinds of tools. They don't use truth. They use lies. They use the opposites. They use deception, manipulation, lies, half-truths, rather than using full truths, accuracy. And, of course, it's, it's motivated by this hate, which ultimately is, of course, motivated by a pride. A, there's, a, there's a sense there of wanting to replace this one thing. Why? Because they can't build anything of their own. They can't build anything of their own. This is why... Um, it alarms me when I see, and it happens so much that it, it's disappointing that we, I, I wish I could just take what's in my head and put it into your heads, but when, when people come along and they, and they redefine words, for example, and, they, and, it, and you'll find that people do this not to make things clearer, they redefine words to make things more, to make things murkier, to make things less clear. They'll use a word and go, well, that's not what that word means, because they've changed it, you know, they'll change a the definition suddenly and go, well, this is what it means. Well, then what is, how, what's the word for the old word? Oh, it doesn't, you don't need that word anymore. It's frightening, it's scary, because you should wonder, why don't they just make a new word? Or why don't they use a more accurate term? Why are they intentionally trying to, to muddy the waters and make it less clear? Well, there's a reason for it. There's absolutely a reason for it. Yeah. But, you know, it's, if we understand why, it's frightening. And then we have to do something about it. And you know, none of us really want to do anything about it, because... It's a lot of work. I understand that. But you're right. He does, he does separate the world pretty clearly in these two categories. People who love and create, people who hate and destroy. Is it possible to love and destroy? Is it possible to, to hate and still create? I don't know. Martí is saying no. 
He's saying that it's just divided into these two types of people. And of course, then we're also confronted with the question of whether or not it is done intentionally. Like you might, you know, you might love and intend it to, to fix something, but I encourage us again to look at, at, at the methods that we use for doing that. Like I was talking last period, you might really love somebody, and so you're going to lie to them to try to get them to like you. But understand what it is that you're doing when you do that. You're not making that person like you. You're not making them love you. You're making them love an avatar that's not really you. You're making them love a mask. And you're going to always have to have it in the back of your mind. They don't really love me for who I really am. They love me for who they think I am. Yeah, correct that. They love, you for, they love you for who you tricked them into thinking that you were. And sometimes we do it ourselves. We fall in love with someone and we say, I don't care if he's got Edgar hair and a sideways hat. I love him anyway. I don't care if all those rumors about her are true. I love her anyway. As Kanye said, I don't care what none of y'all say, I still love her. And it isn't so much that the person was an angel, it's that we, we make them so. Or at least we make them appear to be so. We give them a mask of that. And then we're surprised when people turn out to be what they are, rather than what we expected them to be. And we get mad at them for, for, for not being what we expected them to be, or wanting them to be, or created them in our own minds to be. Because oftentimes we create people in the images of the things that we think we need. One thing, of course, that we know, you don't always get the things that you want, but you can get the things that you need. But also, as we know, the audience is bullshit, and we don't always know what we need. We know what we want, or we think we know what we want. We know what we want from a very limited perspective. I want, I don't know, I want a Ferrari. Now, my question, I guess, to you is, do you really want one, though? If you had one, what would you do with it? I wonder how many of us would be alive one year from now if we had a Ferrari right now. And then, of course, I wonder if that would be your dying, your, your dying thought as you slammed into the building because you were going too fast and you couldn't control it. I wonder if your dying thought would be, huh, I didn't want this Ferrari. <laughs> I changed my mind. I no longer want this. And that's what makes life so hard, by the way, that we don't always know the things that we want until we have them, and we can spend a lifetime trying to get them and then we might realize, I didn't want this all along, but it's too late to go back now and change the ways that we lived and to get something else. So we have to be real uh, clear and careful about the things that we want. And that's why it's a good reason to examine why we want the thing. Do you want the Ferrari because you want to drive super fast? Yes. Or do you want the Ferrari because, it's because you want people to see you driving it and think that you are a success? Maybe. You want it because it makes you feel good about yourself, because this is what you think that is, this is a nice thing that you think that people have, that you want to have for yourself. Yeah. So is it motivated by pride? In other words, we can at least understand these things as the motivations. There are, there are the motivations of gods, and there are the motivations of devils. The motivations of the gods are the things that we want for people, we want for ourselves, that are good for us. And we can't go about trying to engineer it. That's the hard part. Because you might think, like, well, I can create something really good, but I'm going to have to lie to do it. Well, then it's not good. It's not a real thing. It's a false thing. You had to destroy reality to try to make something good happen. And so now it makes me wonder, how good is it? Because what's good is what's natural. What's natural is what's good. If things could be otherwise, they would be. Or, I'm sorry, if things should be otherwise, then they would be. But you'll notice that there's an equilibrium in history where things, we might try to change things and make things a certain way, and we force them really hard, but they always go back because there's a force that drives it that way. Like I said, there's an equilibrium to history. And there's an equilibrium to reality. Reality always, always, always wins. Yeah. I told my last period, I said, I love you guys, I gotta pay you, but if it's, a, if it's a fight between you and reality, I'm betting on reality. I'll put a dollar on you, just in case. And those million to one odds pay off. But otherwise, I'm putting everything on reality because reality is just too strong. It's too powerful. It's truth. And let's face it, the truth is the very thing that sets us free. And if truth is the thing that sets us free, then what's the thing that keeps us in bondage, tied up, locked up? Lies. Non-truths. Because now we're subservient to those things. We serve the lies. Now we have to pretend accordingly. We have to try really hard to, 
So now let anybody find out. And now we're in bondage. And then we wonder how we got here. Well, the way we got here was because this also takes courage. To love takes courage, man. What's the, you know, what's the positive end to loving someone? Every love ends badly. 100%. 100%. Either you fall in love with somebody, and then eventually it breaks up, and did badly. Or you love somebody, and they love you back, and you spend a lifetime with them, and then one of you dies before the other. So no love ends well. But we do it anyway. Why? Well, it takes courage to do that. It takes courage to pursue, to, to create. Why? Because if you create something, what can happen? It can get destroyed. And this is the very thing that, 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 that the devil seek to do. You know, it's like, why do we, another reason that we create is because we want, we want there to be some kind of evidence, some kind of proof that we were here at some point. Why do people want children? Just so they can leave something behind in the world. Why do we create these big buildings and these monuments and write books and, and all that? Because we want, to be, we want to leave something of ourselves behind. We want something that shows that we were actually here and that therefore our lives mattered. Like if you were to die today, I wonder... If, you, if, if there would be any remembrance of you whatsoever. Once your parents were gone, and they forgot about you, well, not forgot about you, but once that memory went with them, would there be any proof that you ever existed? And that's scary, because if, if that's the case, then the suffering wasn't worthwhile. It didn't have a meaning. It didn't have a good, a good reason for it. And that's terrifying to us, that, 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 that suffering can, can, be, can, be, can be meaningless. So we have to find a meaning in it. We have to find a purpose in it. And that's why we build monuments. That's why we have families. Because we want something of us to be left behind. The devils are the ones who come along and say, No. No, we're going to destroy your systems. We're going to destroy your, your families. We're going to destroy your buildings. We're going to destroy your monuments. And they say, well, and we're going to replace it with something better. Why can't you just contribute to it and add to it? Nope. You're going to destroy it. And this is the only way they can find a way. But, like I said, there's an equilibrium to history. Whatever it is they try to replace it with will be replaced itself. 100%. Guaranteed. Yeah. So do you think people should create monuments and eventually they're going to forget about it too? Personally, what I think? That's a good question. Others? Questions, comments, concerns, complaints, criticisms? 